Welcome everybody to the NF Core Bite Size Talk series. It's a pleasure for me to welcome today Evan Floden. Um, Evan is the CEO and co-founder of Secura Labs. Most of you already know him. And he'll be introducing today Nextflow Tower, one of Secura's uh, products and showing us the latest features. So thanks for joining us today, Evan, and um, look forward to hearing about it. Well, thanks a lot, Gisela. It's really nice to be here. I've been following these talks along um, since they started. It's really great to have this kind of continuity and, and continuation of, um, of ideas and, and kind of a nice forum for, for these places. So where I'm going to talk about today is, is a little bit about Nextflow Tower. And I'm going to go more into the kind of new features that we have coming out, um, some of the more things that we're, we're excited about as opposed to kind of doing a general overview. But if you are interested in general overview, get in touch with us. Um, we, can, we can set up a demo. We can kind of go into your specific use cases and, 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 and dive into that. But before I start um, too much into that, to provide a little bit about, about what is Nextflow Tower itself um, and, and kind of what is it designed to do for. And then we're going to go into look at some of the, some of the new things that we have coming out around uh, community workspaces, around um, tower actions, so really automating a lot of your workflows, reporting and outputs, and then finally introducing the new um, tower data sets functionality. So a little bit of background if you're, if, you're, if you're not aware. So Tower is a full stack web application for the management of your Nextflow pipelines. Really developed it after many years of, of speaking with Nextflow users who required a couple of things. They needed a, a user interface to interact with the Nextflow pipelines. They also wanted API access to make their Nextflow pipelines be able to be services so that you can have other, um, other systems talking to them. They also wanted um, a database of the history of your execution. So you can go back and say, okay, who ran this pipeline? What was the you know, kind of the, the working directory of this? And then you wanted to dive into some of the statistics um, of those workflows. The other thing that was really important was the configuration and particularly in configuration of cloud environments. So being able to set up a, an AWS batch environment, for example, we really wanted to automate that process and enable the people to kind of use the same way they interact with Nextflow, um, but with a, with a sort of long running service, which can, can stand up and, and do some of these cool things. So Nextflow Tower itself, um, as I say, is a full stack web application. It can be deployed in your own environment. Um, so our customers deploy it in their own AWS, Azure, Google, et cetera, or you can install it on-premise as well. The application itself is made up of a couple of pieces, but the main thing from a user perspective is that you can interact with it um, in many different ways. And it has the same philosophy of Nextflow in the sense that it can be deployed in all these places, but it also connects in with the different computing platforms. So this means that you can deploy it in, in a given situation or a given location and then have the compute running in a completely um, different location. Okay, let's first step into now some of the new things that we have coming out. And the first of these is the, the community showcase. And what we've done here is we really wanted to make it very easy for people who are first using Tower to be able to have quick access to some of the key features around it, including pipelines which have been verified. So I'll give you a quick showcase of, of what this looks like um, now inside of, inside of Tower. So anyone who signs up um, gets automatically added to this community showcase. And this showcase is a, essentially what we call a workspace, which can contain pipelines themselves, which are pre-configured. You can see there's a couple of NF core pipelines that we have here, and we're adding to these sort of over time. So over the next couple of weeks, there'll be a, a big release where we'll put all the compatible NF core pipelines into here, and we'll allow people to run them. So this workspace is connected to a computer environment in AWS, so you can run in that environment. And it's a kind of nice, easy way to be able to get started with these workflows themselves and, and sort of kick them off. Kind of some criteria around putting, putting these workspaces, sorry, putting these workflows into this workspace. One of them was to have, make sure there's a kind of valid Nextflow schema file. So for example, if I click RNAC care, the fact that it has this Nextflow schema means that all of the inputs can be rendered in this way. This makes it very easy for a user to go down, say, select a particular option that they want, um, and then kick off and, and launch that workflow. And that's the kind of the main, the main kind of idea of this is to provide a set of validated pipelines which kind of conform to a particular way of running. Um, obviously, things like the, the profile test, which is a kind of core NF, uh, NF core uh, profile that needs to be valid there. I mean, a couple of things around how much resources those things take, because we want to have something that's just kind of sensible for running um, in, in a way like this. So now you can go, for example, here, you'd be able to go jump into that run if I wish to kind of dive into there, see that run. But also this is a kind of shared space, so I can go see uh, other workflows that people have launched. 
dive in. And if you're not familiar with Tower, it kind of provides a, a very easy kind of monitoring single pane of glass into the workflow. So you can see the different tasks, processes, memory, et cetera, and then jump in um, to, to that. I'm not gonna go too much into that today though. Uh, we wanna sort of keep it to, uh, um, keep it to the new stuff um, for that. So that is the, the kind of introduction of those of, of the community workspace that we have. Other thing that I wanted to show you and, and to describe is around um, the automation of this. And we, show, we saw last week in Gisela's talk that she described a little bit about how there was a GitHub action, which was triggering an execution of a, of a, of a pipeline. And that was essentially using um, the endpoint there. We've started to see some more sophisticated use cases of this. Um, and all this can be seen um, from inside the actions pane. So you can see here that we can create an action and actually at the moment can have a couple of triggers. One of it could be in this case, a GitHub webhook. So when I commit to this repository, this execution will fire off this pipeline. So in this case, there'll be a GTK pipeline, which will run. And this can be very useful for, for similar to what we saw last week, where it's really triggering the execution of a pipeline in some kind of testing mechanism. What's also become really useful is the creation of a, of a webhook here uh, in terms of creating a customized endpoint in the application, which will allow you to trigger the pipeline if I hit this endpoint with some given parameters. So I can create a pipeline here, set up some action, choose the computer environment, have it all kind of pre-configured. And then as soon as I hit that endpoint, that pipeline will, will, will start off. Now, this has been around for, for, around for a little bit. What we're starting to see now, though, is the ability to uh, have those triggers sort of executed based on different events. So a common one that we see with users is setting up, a, for example, a Lambda function, which is able to detect a, a CSV file, for example, a sample sheet entering into an S3 bucket, and that will then trigger um, the execution of this pipeline in this way. And this is the kind of whole automation, you can imagine stuff coming off your sequencer, going through a predefined pipeline, and then be notified of that um, at the end and something that we've seen um, a lot of success with as well. And that's really just the first point of that. We wanted to make it a lot easier for you to have any kind of um, automations here and also be able to automate different parts of the system. Maybe not just launching pipelines, but, but other aspects of that. And then for that, we've started to, we've released um, the, the full open API for Tower itself. So as the application grew to multiple users, multiple organizations, et cetera, uh, we wanted to expand the API as well and make it kind of fully um, visible to users that are here. This allows you to then interact with it um, in, in sort of many different ways, but also allows us to build an SDK on top of the API, which allows us to really sort of get to the point here, is, which allows us to build um, the command line interface. So this is something we've just released uh, in the last week or so. And this is the, the Tower CLI. It's still an alpha release, but I can hopefully um, show you a little bit about sort of how it look, how it sort of works here. So you have an interaction very much similar to if you've used Nextflow Run with Tower, and you essentially specify a workspace ID, uh, you specify um, a, a basically a token that you're going to be using, and then it's going to submit work, uh, workflows into that area. There's a couple of little things here about how you can set this up. Um, follow this tutorial as well if you want if you want to set this up. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to give you a short, uh, short, 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 quick demo of what it looks like. So if I was here in the command line um, interface, for example, I could then interact with my Tower server by maybe I want to list the credentials which are available to me in, in, in Tower. So if I list them here, you can see I have some AWS credentials set up um, and you can see sort of when I set them up, they've got some ID associated with them. And then very much like you've got Nextflow run, we wanted to allow to have a similar thing, which is like Tower launch. And this is, this is kind of a keeping of the philosophy of people who want to interact with the command line. So if I say here, tower launch, I can even specify here, even just a repository. It doesn't even have to be a predefined pipeline. It can just be any next floor repository here. And if it's set to run, I can launch this. And if I can quickly, I can't quickly share my screen quick, uh, fast enough. I'm going to jump over to the tower uh, and then hopefully here we'll see uh, inside of this, um, sorry, inside of this workspace here, you can see that, that that triggered the execution of that pipeline. So this is a kind of a, a, another quick way to do this. We also see use cases where people want to automate the creation of computer environments, for example. Maybe you want a computer environment for every user or parameterize that somehow. And that also allows you to, uh, to do that with, uh, um, with the CLI. So again, one of these things we're really excited to see what people build um, with it and, and hopefully can get a lot of value out of that. And particularly if you're a bioinformatician, still loves the command line, um, and wants to interact 
um, with these with these things in, in that way. Okay, uh, next thing is a, is a kind of a small thing, but it's uh, it may be quite useful for uh, for people. If you're often in a situation where you launch a pipeline, you maybe have some inputs, you launch a pipeline, and then you have some outputs. Sometimes visualizing that information or, or accessing that information is, is not necessarily straightforward. Those outputs could be in some published DIR, in some S3 bucket, for example, and maybe you don't have, you, can, you don't want to go to go navigate through that or, or, or look up the, the console in AWS to go find that or even go into your shared storage and, and sort of access it in that way. So what we're coming up with is a way to manage um, outputs, essentially be able to view share results that come off the Nextflow pipeline. So what you can do here is be able to define any given outputs. I mean, a classic example would be something like multi-QC. So you would specify multi-QC uh, in, um, in the workflow definition. It can actually be predefined in the pipeline itself. And then from the user, once the pipeline is complete, you can then visualize those reports uh, inside of here. You can go down, select PDFs, um, HTML, uh, images, et cetera. And this will kind of keep a, a kind of centralized place for, for those results. And it's also nice because when you look at those results later on, you can imagine um, sort of taking them, going back and understanding exactly what the process was, what the workflow was that, um, that created that. Uh, and you can access them um, in, in that way. The final thing I'm going to talk about, which is a little bit related to this, and it's, um, it's, it's sort of a, a way of also first attempt, attempt to going into sort of data management space. And this has kind of been a long time coming uh, because it's been a lot of work actually with, um, with folks in NF Core around uh, how we structure this and, and the kind of uh, the, the schema that we use for this. I'm very pleased though to announce that we now have, um, and, and we'll have out this week, is the, the Nextflow Tower datasets functionality. So what, is, what does datasets functionality do? Well, this is, allows you a way to define um, in, typically input datasets for now that can then be run in a pipeline. It sounds a little bit trivial, but there's kind of a key thing that it does here. One is it enables you to keep track of everything that's gone into a workflow itself, but also then you can um, update these, keep versions of them and make it much easier for a user to be able to launch a workflow based on some given input. So the datasets functionality here, you can see I've got an example here. I can create a new data set. Um, so let's just call this RNA-seq uh, example data set. Just call this sample sheet. Then I'm gonna specify a description if I want, but I can drag and drop um, a sample sheet in here, TSV, uh, CSV files, for example. And when I drop it into here, you can see it gets an output and you can see this is the NF core mega test that we're using. So in this case, it has got a a row is the header, so I can specify that. Now you can see I've got the samples, um, the, the actual files themselves, the strandedness, et cetera. And I could, if I wanted to, then like re-upload a new version of this and it would have a, have a version um, update. The really nice thing though, is that this follows uh, a schema. So if I create this now, you can see I have RNA uh, example sample sheet. Imagine that this could also be automated as well. So imagine that that sample sheet was created from some automation. As a launchpad user, so as someone who just wants to kick off a pipeline, I can have predefined pipelines here now. And when I go to run this, my input, given that knows the kind of schema of the input, I can simply select down here and you see I get a drop down of that workflow to run. So I can select the workflow that I have and then launch the pipeline. Now it seems kind of trivial, but you can imagine connecting this thing up with outputs. For example, then maybe from the a launch of a pipeline, you would be able to go see the inputs of that, the outputs of that, and then kind of reuse these things. So we can create um, kind of full ability to, uh, to reuse and trace um, the reports that go into this. So this is a kind of quick overview of everything got. Maybe if you can think of ways that you can connect a lot of these ideas together, I think there's a, there's a lot of potential for this we're doing. I say, if you, if you do want to like a more detailed demo um, or, or, or uh, sort of dive into this stuff, please reach out to us and uh, we'd be happy to, to walk you through it as well. So I think it was 14 minutes, must be a record. Yes, that, that must be a, a record of, of um, yeah, the, the right size talk that actually kept in time. <laughs> so thanks a lot for, for this, this great introduction of, of um, Tower's new features, Evan. Um, it, please, if you have any questions, just pose them into the chat. Um, but if nobody has one, then I'll have one <laughs> first. Um, I, it's great this this new CLI that you presented. Um, I was uh, really impressed by it. And 
can you also provide uh, parameters, for example, when you when you trigger like tower launch and how do that work? Yeah, exactly. You, you sure can. So when you specify um, the the, um, the parameters here, you can specify them. Let me just find the example of this. Um, so one 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 case of doing this would be to have uh, on the on the RNA seek sorry on the basic hello next flow pipeline. There's a parameter um, for the timeout here, so you can see that you can specify. Uh, the parameters um, in, in this way here. This is a way on, on running it in this way. So you've got this dash dash params field um, for doing so. Obviously that you can structure this in a different way. Another interesting thing is that from the API way, you can actually submit, uh, sorry, through the CLI, but you can provide like a JSON object if you want, if you're kind of used to dealing with that, then it kind of provides a, um, a sort of different way of doing it without having to specify exactly each thing. Oh yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. Um, are there any other questions so far? Don't see any other ones in the chat. Um, I was thinking if it's uh, possible to upload data sets via the command line as well. Maybe. Yeah, c currently it will be available via the API. Uh, and that's like this kind of big use case we see. So you can imagine that you could even automate the whole thing where you're going to be having a data set which is kind of dropping in some S3 off some sequencer. That's going to, you know, upload to a data set. So you've kind of got the CSV. You know all the, you know all where your reads are. You know where your samples are. You know all the metadata associated with them. And that in itself triggers the execution of a, um, of a, of a pipeline. And you kind of get a full circle here, and it would create some output which you can then use for something else. So yeah, that'll certainly, that'll certainly be available um, by, via the API. Uh, via the command line, I, I think it should be possible as well. It just hasn't been integrated because the data sets is, uh, is still just a little bit behind the, um, the CLI in this case. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, this opens a lot of possibilities for automation triggering pipelines, yeah. Okay. Is there are any as there aren't any other questions uh, i'd like to thank you again for this this nice introduction and um yeah um close the bite-sized talk for today